Look at me. We will be. message into my heart for everybody here and even those who are watching by the internet and he's saying this your eyes have become cloudy the cares of this world are blinding you when you look to my throne all you can see is a trickle of water I tell you step into that trickle let my water wash over your feet and let my faith rise up in you and that trickle of water will rise up to your knees to your waist let my word wash over you and through you and that water will come up to your shoulders and over your head and you will be swimming in my presence I know that's a normal reaction, but don't let um, you to to you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I say that I'm not coming down on you. That's our normal reaction, and, but that's that's not the most appropriate response every time. A better response is to lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands in the presence of God. Come on, just do that. Just just do that. We lift our hands to you, Father. We receive. We receive clarity. We receive even more accuracy. As we hone in, we hone in, we exercise our senses, Father, we exercise them now, and we receive from the throne of heaven. Remove the spiritual cataracts and the cloudiness over our eyes. Remove the, remove the, 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 the dullness from our hearts and from our thinking, and let us fine-tune it just a little bit better. We lock into you now, to the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we lock into you right now. You're, you're speaking, you're moving. I, I sense your presence moving. Um, I, can, I can see it, Father. I can see it with my spiritual eyes moving on your people. And so we yield to that. We don't get in a hurry this morning. We just let you move. Boy, there's, there's, there's heavy hearts in here. And the heaviness, the heaviness is, is in response to... Um, to uh, disappointment, as the best way I can say it. Somebody's been disappointed, disillusioned. I know you hear, because I hear the Lord say it. I heard him say it when I was sitting there, and I hear him saying it now. If you just lift your hands and trust me, follow the leading of my word, and not what you see, you'll find that the path has already been made for you. Yes, Lord. And surely, as my word is a light and a lamp unto your feet and your path, you'll find clarity. That's what she said. Clarity. And your body, your, 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 your entire body, spirit, soul, and body, will feel refreshed by the water of my presence. Come on now, I know you're here. And there's more than one. So we drink now. We drink spiritually. We drink God from the, the fountain that never runs dry. We enjoy the living water that courses over us, through us, and out of us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> just laugh a little bit. Come on, just laugh. Don't laugh because it's funny. Laugh because it's intentional. Laugh because your enemy can't keep you. He can't keep you. He can't. He can't laugh. Just laugh. I don't feel like laughing. That's why you need to laugh. Especially if you don't feel like it. Yeah. Some of you need to learn to laugh by faith. <laughs> Laughing many times is better than crying. The Bible says that the Lord sits in at his throne and laughs and puts that man or unrighteous man in derision. Because 
because he, they have no clue who you are. That's right. The devil has no clue who you are. That's it. He doesn't know how victorious you are. He doesn't know what you had to endure to get here today. He didn't know what you had to overcome to wake up and still have breath in your lungs. He didn't know. He didn't know who he was messing with, did he? If he could have killed you, he'd have kept you. He'd have, he'd have tried to take you while you were sleeping. He'd have tried to crash your car by no logical means should you be here this morning. But by the grace of God, you're here this morning. A living, breathing, walking, talking miracle. By the glory and the power of the living God. That's who you are. That's who you are. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise. We bless you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, glory. I tell you what, I was I was on uh, the phone. Those of you that know me, I do not like talking on the phone. I make no apologies. I just don't care for the phone. Because most of the time when I get on it, people want to talk way too long. I want to talk like 30 seconds. They want to talk a minute. I'm just saying. That's 30 seconds too long for me. And I was on the phone with somebody very special to me the other day. And we talked for almost two hours. Yeah, that was a miracle. But I was talking to the individual and the spirit of the Lord came upon me. And I was laying in my, on my bed. It wasn't in the bed. I was on the bed uh, talking to them. And just this spirit of joy just flooded my heart. And I mean, I couldn't contain it. And I, I heard the Lord say to me, why do you want to contain it? Why are you intimidated by looking foolish in front of people? Because ultimately, there was nobody else around. <laughs> it was just me in my bedroom. She was in her office. And the Lord was showing me that in every situation, no matter where we find ourselves on the planet, he is there. Yes. He's there to be what you need him to be at that moment. And what we have a tendency to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is to confine him into our religious training box. You know what I mean by that? We've been taught religiously that God is great, and he is. There's no disputing that. But he's also very much in love with us. Yes. And his grace is greater than your sin. Yes. His love is greater than how you feel about you. Yes. You, you. you simply, let's say you, I mean it's me as well. We simply have not grasped the fullness of his love, but we will. And we're on our way there. Unless we know that God's love trumps every negative thing that the devil could ever send your way, unless we know that for sure, we will stumble all the way to God's throne and find ourselves one day face to face with him through the, through the release of this body into his presence. And we will look back and the Lord will say, see what you left, what you could have had. This life should be as days of heaven on earth. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And we, we cannot allow ourselves to settle for mediocrity. Yeah. Amen. Average. Yeah. Amen? Amen? God's plan for our lives has never been one of either mediocrity or just being average. His plan is great towards us. And it includes all of the things we talk about. People get, people, I, can, I, I know it because, again, we've been doing this for a long time, but, but people get a little, they, they start, you know, and I, I had to grow out of this. We take kind of a step back when we hear certain things that doctrinally we don't agree with. If you start talking about money in church, my, mentally, I take a step back. Come on now. Because why is it always about money, somebody would say. Stay with me. Pull your religious coat with that. And actually, it's not always about money. <laughs> I got one no and not at all. You see what I'm saying? Because we take, we've been trained to take a step back. How did we get that way? Because our, our surroundings or our churches have taught us that there's certain things, well, I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, I'm going to tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you something that the Lord has laid on my heart, and I'm, I'll get into this in just a second. But there's every, everything in here that, that has been ordained by God, and this doesn't contain God. This is just writings about God. And it is the best compass that we have to get us to heaven. That's it. By 
by the leading of the Holy Spirit. But the thing about this is that I'm not, if I find something in here that I simply can't get with, it is not this, it is me. Amen. If God, by the, uh, Isaiah 53rd chapter, if God says that you are healed, he says, uh, Isaiah starts out by saying, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It starts out with the very thing that I need to know. Who is going to believe God's report? Amen. The doctor will tell you something that God has already taken care of, and it's harder for us to believe God than it is for the doctor. Why? Because I can see the doctor. I can't always see God. Well, see, I've got to come to the place where I don't need to see God. I need to know that God is on my side. He's for me because he said he was. I don't need any evidence to that effect. I didn't save myself. Come on now. I'm not my own righteous being. Oh, help me, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, man, I really sense the presence of the Lord here. I'm going to have to exercise some discipline this morning. Um, glory to God. Y'all in a hurry? No. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to keep you. Romans 10. Turn to Romans 10. I'm, I'm preempting what you guys have back there, gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. But stay with me. Romans 10, verse 1. I heard the Lord say something this morning. Hallelujah. My God, I give you praise. When you get Romans 10, would you say amen? Look up at me. We will have it on the board if you don't have the Bible. Glory to God. Romans 10, verse 1. Hold your place. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for the overwhelming flood of your presence. Thank you for the never-ending, endearing joy that you have towards us. Thank you that this morning your mercies were new. We needed new mercy. I needed new mercy. Lord, I thank you that your grace is always sufficient for me. I thank you that there is no temptation taken me than such that is common to man, but you are faithful and you will, with the temptation, make a way of escape. Lord, let me find the door to escape my enemy this morning. I bind the spirit of doubt and unbelief in this place, Lord God. I come against the spirit of dis depression and distraction in the name of Jesus and say that you are under arrest by the authority of God. We loose the spirit of the living God, Holy Ghost, to have your will and way in this place. By your love, manifest faith in this place. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We give you praise. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. Romans 10, verse 1, starting at verse 1. I'm just going to read from verse 3. It, it's up here on the board. I'm going to read this from the expanded Bible, but I want you to hear something as I read. Brothers and sisters, this is the Apostle Paul writing. The thing I want most, and my prayer to God, is for all the Jews to be saved. Who's he talking to? Come on. Who's he talking to? Jews. Say Jews. Okay, that's important. Verse 2. I can say this about them. They really try to follow God, but they do not know the right way. Verse 3 says, because they did not know the way that God makes people right with him or makes them righteous, they tried to make themselves right in their own way. So they did not accept God's way of making people right. Look up at me. Listen to me very closely. God is never going to allow you to make the way to him. He's already made the way to him. And you have to follow his way. You can't follow your own. Many people are disillusioned with church because not that the pastor was bad or the pastor, uh, she's not the pastor's wife, she's the executive pastor, or the ministers were bad. Not that the people in the body were bad, but because their own thinking was off and askew, then they find fault with the church that Jesus made. Mm -hmm. Jesus created this church. It's not the building, it's the people. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? And because of that, what we find ourselves, just like the Jews here, they, they thought they were righteous based on everything external. And it was the external that they offered to God. God does not need your external. No. No. Come on. He needs your heart. Amen. And I, I say that that's really a misnomer because it's not that he needs your heart, but it's best to serve God with joy. Yeah. Because if you don't serve God with joy, you find yourself struggling in just the everyday existence. Because you don't really, you don't really struggle in here, help me God. But because in here is not where you live your life. It's easy to be anointed and appointed and strong in the Lord in here because why? Everybody in here is supposed to have faith. But it is not here where God gets his greatest glory out of our lives. 
And if you find yourself thinking that you have to do it the way that you think you should, instead of the way that God said you should, you will trip up every time. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It is dangerous to follow denominational thinking with a living God. God does not have denominations. We've heard this before. There is no such thing as a, product, uh, a Presbyterian or uh, Episcopalian or Holiness or, or a Baptist or a Catholic. It just doesn't exist with God. God looks for those individuals whose hearts are fully persuaded and turned on with Him. And I believe, just as she said it, she came up and shared it with me. I believe that the time has come for the church to stop being mediocre and stop being average and stand up for who you really are in Christ Jesus. You're going to have to put, you're going to have to tighten your belt and tie your shoes up a little bit now. We're going to have to get some things done because the Lord is soon to come. And it is an indicator of the age to make us think that we have time. And it is a dangerous thing to think you have time when you don't control time. Right. Many people who went to bed last night did not wake up this morning right. thinking that they had time. Right. Are you hearing me this morning? Yes. And so these Jews, they were here, they were, they were in, they, they had a sense of entitlement. They felt special because God had chosen them to be the seed, say seed, seed. that brought in everything else relating to the kingdom. Help me this morning, coach. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, man, I sense the power of God this morning. I'm trying to be disciplined. Are y'all praying or y'all just watching? Are y'all participating or y'all just spectating? What time is the football game? Who cares? What time are you supposed to eat? Well, who cares? You're eating right now. Oh, hallelujah. Best meal in town is for the puppy, sir. Amen. That's not arrogant. That's just truth. Hallelujah. So I want to, I'm, I'm transitioning and segueing into the, to the next phase of this. We've been talking all year long, uh, learning the potential in every seed in 2018. Isn't that right? Yeah. Today I want to talk to you about you've been replanted. You have been replanted. Over the last few weeks, if you haven't been with us, you're, you're, you're going to, might feel a little lost. I'll try to bring you up to speed, but I would encourage you to go to our website and look at, look at, follow the pattern of messages that we've been talking about. We established early on that God's plan for Adam and Eve was that they would be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Did we not? And we found out that through study through Genesis 2, you can write it down, I'm not going to turn there, that Adam took an alternate route by allowing Eve and himself to pull fruit from the tree that God said not to touch. And the, the significance of that we determined was that what happens when, when we do things outside of God's plan for our lives, we determine our own destiny. It's a crazy thing to think you're on the right path, think you're going to the right church, think you married the right man, think you married the right woman, think you <laughs> have the right job, and then find out years later that none of that was true. I ain't got no witness in here today. Okay, so 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 with that, I, I am delighted that even and, and I use I can only use my relationship as a key because this is the only woman I've ever been married to. No shade, no no issue with you. I'm not throwing stones. I'm just telling you that it is better to be in the will of God all your life than get there too late. Amen. Amen. You say, well, what, what, what about me? I'm just starting. Well, then you need to lock in, just like I said in Romans 10, lock into what you know now. Stop going by your feelings and start going by the word. Amen. Amen. Too many people don't show up at a time when, when the word of God is being presented because they didn't feel like it. Right. Who's quiet in here? <laughs> feelings that have been given by God have not been designed by God to lead you. <laughs> Feelings have been given by God so that we can experience the fullness of life in this earth. I was feeling it yesterday on the volleyball court. <laughs> Even though I lost, I still won. Come on, somebody. Because I did not allow the game to dictate how I felt. Amen. I allowed who God is in me to be able to say, yeah, I gave it a good shot. We, we, we didn't go down like, like punks. We, there's always next year should God delay his coming. But my feelings disengaged from what, what the outcome is. Help me, God. And many people are tied up, well, you know, he didn't do me right, so I feel bad. Well, baby, get over it and let's move on. <laughs> So, so 
We understood that with, with, that would happen. Let me keep going for a second time with Adam. So Adam ate the tree, and God gave him the left foot of fellowship. Y'all know what that left foot is? Kicked him out of the garden. Yes. And posted an angel that still stands there today and makes sure ain't nobody walking in that garden before it's time. Amen. But we will see that garden again. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. All right? So he moves him on out of the way. Now, what is happening is that God is getting back what he determined. He, his, as his intent was in the beginning, so it is now. He intends for all of us to be fruitful. Say that with me. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. And I multiply. I multiply. That's his intent. That's what he wants to do. So from Genesis 9, again, I'm not going to turn there. Then he told, tells Noah, because what happened before Noah, Noah uh, uh, built the ark? What happened? The Bible says that the intent, God looked down and saw that the intent of man's heart was evil continually. So he decides, I'm going to wipe them all out. I'm going to start over, but I'm going to plant a seed named Noah. Come on now. Noah is the seed to keep the, to keep the family of humanity going. Isn't that right? Y'all know this, okay? You, know, you learned this in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. You know this. They just didn't say it like I just said it, okay? So what happens? Now Noah has to learn to live in God's uh, covenant. And what God said to him, he did not tell Noah that I'm going to bless you exceedingly. Rather, he told Noah, be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. There's a command attached to that because when God speaks, God speaks in definitive terms. He's not, he's not expecting you to go out and just stand and do nothing, but rather he's expecting you to engage humanity and be fruitful. Mm -hmm. yes. There's a difference. Let me see if I can explain the difference. It's like somebody would say to me, you know, I want you to go out and be a man. Huh? I am a man. Okay. Come on. Come on now. The only way I can not be a man is if I don't know who I am. And many Christians try to be Christians because they don't know who Christians are. They think that because they've said a prayer and they might read a devotional once a month, that that makes them a Christian. It does not. Come on. What God says is, listen, I have empowered. He says to know I've given you everything you need to go out and just be. We as humanity, born again, believers, disciples of the Lord, we should be going out to our jobs, to our professions, to school, wherever we go, and just what? Be. Oh my God, help me. You should be an influencer. You should be a deliverer, deliverer of healing. You should be a deliverer of those who need deliverance. You should be somebody who can meet the needs of other people. You shouldn't be scared to go out and lay your hands on somebody. Well, now you might want to ask their permission before you do it. But that might not even tell you to do that. But because people have not given you that understanding, you think that it's God's job to do it, not yours. And that's why our churches have become impotent. Powerless. Amen. Are you with me? Glory to God. Let's keep going. So that's what we saw. We, we talked last week about the first woman and, and her significance in the multiplica multiplication of humanity. We talked from the natural standpoint, but you also have to understand that God also gave man, the woman, as a partnership, not as a subordinate, but as somebody who yielded themselves to him, to the husband. But the husband and wife work together as a team to get the job done. Say amen. So they do it in the natural sense, but it was not just the natural sense that God was talking about. He wants you to do it spiritually. Oh, Ecclesiastes said what? It is that two are better than one. And so what we need to understand is the significance of each other's purpose. Why? And, oh, help me, God. Why did God make me a woman and not a man? Why did he allow me to be uh, 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 African-American or black? Either one, helping white people out here. I don't know what to say. It always changes. Black, African-American works. Okay? I'm just saying. All right? Y'all know, some of y'all know, I don't know what to say. You know, I'm telling you what to say. Anyway, I had no choice in that matter. God had all the choice in that. My mom and daddy didn't even have a choice in that. Right? So with that, why does God do what he does the way he does? That's not as important as, to, as knowing that he's doing something in me, through me, for me, by me, so that I can change the world around me. Right? So, let's keep going. Mm, going too fast. 
So the first woman has her significance, right? Now, I want you to, um, of course, I read this scripture, Proverbs 18.22. You can write it down. I'm not going to go there, but it says it's not good for a man to be alone. But he says, whosoever findeth a wife finds what? A good thing. But what else, what else happens? Obtain, there you go. Obtains favor of the Lord. Amen. All right. Now, I want to jump off into this. Turn to Genesis 17 for me, if you would, please. Just hold your place there. Genesis 17. And I want to show you the difference between Abraham, um, excuse me, between Noah and Abraham, because there was a difference. There was a significant difference. Weren't they both used by God? So when you look at your way your sister is blessed or your brother is blessed, don't get don't get your jaw, your nose bent out of shape or whatever. Just know that God's using them a different way than they're using you. Celebrate what they're doing. Amen. So, gentlemen, if you would give me the Amplified Bible, let me read this from the Amplified Bible. Genesis 17. Do you have it? Verse one. It says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Here we go again. God talking about fruit. Right. Multiplication. Let me back up for a second and have everybody look up at me. How does fruit come? Say it louder. Do see. Thank you. OK. Y'all knew that, right? All right. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful. So he had to be giving them what? It's interactive class today. Amen. And I will I will make nations of you. Now, listen, and kings will come from you. And verse seven, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting uh, for for an everlasting solemn pledge to be a God to you and to your posterity after you. And I will give to you and to your posterity after you the land in which you are a stranger going from place to place, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall therefore keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. Look up at me, please. How what? How many kings or what what two different types of kings is God talking about here? Somebody somebody answer that question for me, please. Are there any natural kings that came through Abraham? Can we name a famous one? David. OK, right. Were there any spiritual kings that came through Abraham? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Who else? Who said it? Did you say it? Say it louder. Me. Me. You. I thought y'all shout better than that. You are a king, and some are called to be priests. Mm, God, I wish I had time. Because ultimately, God's plan is never single-minded, even from the beginning of time. He never intended for Adam and Eve to simply just take some 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 shrubs. Y'all know how y'all do neighborhood. I live in. They got people got nice flowers and all that stuff is so pretty. You know, you see the people out here working in their garden, but they can only plant so much. So it wasn't intended for God to just take Adam and Eve and just go out here and plant seeds. What were they doing? They were taking whenever they went to what the the, the assignment was, whenever they went to a new region, because now, come on now, conceptually, I think like this, probably because I grew up in a church, which is not always the best thing. But I used to think that Adam and Eve were just confined to the garden. Anybody else think could be honest. Anybody else think that? Thank you. I, I, you know, I thought it was they were just confined. I never saw anything in scripture that said they were outside of the garden. So why would I think that they were outside? I thought they were right there. But what God's plan was, was to once, oh, help me, once they got all the information that they needed from walking and talking with God in the cool of the day, once God knew they were ready, he could then send them out and do the same thing all over this great big planet. And there would be Garden of Eden everywhere. Not just down where it is, you know, uh, in modern day, they say it's in, in around the area of Turkey or, or in, in that area. And I get that. But 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 God's plan was to be fruitful and multiply. Now, stay with me now, because he made us kings through Abraham. Now, turn to Galatians three for me, please, if you would. Galatians three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Galatians three, I'm just going to run verse out of there. Verse twenty nine. Thank you, Jesus. Let me know when you have it. Gentlemen, I'm going to take the Amplified Bible again, please. Galatians 3, verse 29, when you have it, say amen. He says, if you belong to Christ, does anybody here belong to Christ? Yes. Is anybody here not certain? 
takes more courage to raise that hand than it does the one we just raised. Okay? I'm certain. And I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Most of the time, I don't feel like it. I don't need to feel like it because I'm certain. Okay? I belong to Christ. If you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, get your feelings out the way. Let's, 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 let's cowboy up, as they say. <laughs> you know? Let's, yeah, yeehaw. Let's grow up and let's not care what it feels like. Nobody said Christianity was supposed to feel good. That's the apostles that were hung upside down on crosses and boiled in oil if it felt good. Ask Stephen when he was getting slain by throwing, them throwing stones at if it felt good. Are you hearing me? Let's keep going. If you belong to Christ or in him, who is Abraham's what? Seed. Do you notice? I'm not going to go there today, but do you notice that does not say seeds? Just one. Just one. Who is that? Y'all know it's saying a lot. Jesus. Well, who else? Me. Now, I'm not, I'm not a seeds outside of Jesus. I'm a seed right in, right in with him. Oh, help me, God. See, 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 see religiosity has taught us that, you know, I can't, I can't, it's hard for me to claim that. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't claim that, you might not make it into heaven. How do I know that? Because anytime I can't claim what God is or who God is and who, who he says I am, that means that his righteousness is not truly in my heart. Amen. And so I step outside of him in order to be unworthy. God help me. The only way I can be worthy is if I'm in him. The only way. You can't make yourself righteous. You can't do penance. You can't do community service. You can't do works. You can't. Oh, I. I yeah. He, I love him. And you got to know that you know. Amen? Okay, I'm trying to help you this morning. Let's keep going. So he goes on. He says, then, then you are Abraham's offspring. And in parentheses, it says spiritual heirs according to the promise. Do you see that word promise? You need to underline it, mark it, whatever you do in your Bible, because it's huge. Because this is, this is the significant difference between Adam and, I mean, excuse me, yeah, Adam, Abraham, and uh, excuse me, Adam, Noah, Abraham. This is the difference. Adam did not need a promise Amen. because he had God with him. Yes. His presence was there. Remember we talked about last week, Psalm 8, where he was crowned. I used, he, he was crowned with glory and honor. He had God. He was covered in God. Yes. He was drinking, swimming, living in God. See, we, have, we don't have a concept of that because of the fall, but that's where we're headed. And we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to do that. So now that's that's Adam. Now, because of the sin, let's fast forward because mankind had to be washed away. No pun intended, but that is what happened. <laughs> so now we find ourselves with who? Noah. And Noah was given a command, not a promise. God covenanted with Noah and told him he didn't tell him the same thing he's going to tell Abraham. He did not do it. You read it. You read it for yourself. Okay, I don't have time. So when he tells Noah, gives Noah instruction, Noah goes out here, pulls off this great feat, builds this huge ark. You know, can only imagine what kind of tools he had and, and the labor. You know, he had his sons, whoever was helping him, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll stop there because I started to talk about the movie I watched, Evan Almighty. You watch it for yourself. Anyway, anyway, because he had monkeys carrying stuff. I don't know. Maybe Adam did too. I don't know. I'm just, I mean, maybe Noah did too. But, but point being is that it got built. And then after, the, after Noah built the ark, what happened? What happened significant in his life? After, what happened? What happened with his sons? Who walked in the tent? Come on. I heard somebody say Ham. Ham. Ham, his son, walked in the tent and saw his daddy unclothed. Right? This is important. I'm not just saying this is a, he goes in, he's unclothed, and his being unclothed is significant of the lack of covenant. God help me. See, when we don't have a covenant, we're unclothed. People out there that don't serve God that say, don't, they're not your brother and sister. I'm, I'm here to tell you that. Yeah, I've said that many times. That's not your brother and sister that doesn't serve God. They might be your natural blood kin, but they are not in covenant like this man of God and myself, this woman of God. No, 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 no. Don't, don't dare make that mistake. Because Jesus said, who is my brother but he that doeth the will, God help me, of him who sent me. Are you hearing me? 
So what he does, he comes unclothed, he gets drunk, he comes, becomes unclothed, and then his, his sons, his other two sons, come and cover him. So what, now we see the, 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 the uh, frailty of humanity. You and I are going to miss it sometimes, but it does not destroy God's plan for us as a seed. So now he fast forwards, he brings Abraham on the scene. Abraham comes and God makes what to Abraham? We just read it. Promise. There is a huge difference. Promise. You ever made a promise and didn't keep it? I have. Not, I didn't intend to. But you know there's only one person, one individual, one entity that can make a promise and never break it? That's our papa. <laughs> That's my daddy. I said, that's my daddy. That's my daddy. That's my daddy. See, when I go out, I go out representing my daddy. Don't mess with me because he my daddy. Now, he might be yours, but he really mine. So when I get up against a tight spot, my daddy got my back. I grew up in a family with, with, with four other brothers and three other sisters. And they all was older than me. And if anything happened to their little baby brother, I call on the family. If the family can't handle it, I call on daddy. Amen. Huh? Amen. And what people do is they unlock themselves from the family. Yeah, and then next, you know, you out here running around and, oh, I'm so, I'm so this. No, come connect with the family. Because all we're going to do is come in here and talk about how great our daddy is. Amen. That's what Abraham did. Let me keep going. Where did I leave you off at? Galatians 3? Yeah. Now, I want you to write this scripture down because I want you to do this for your own homework. I was going to read it. I am, but I'm not going to turn to it. Hebrews 6, verse 1. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. We, I've read it many times. Hebrews 6 and 1 says, uh, Therefore, leaving the principles of the, of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will, we will do if God permit. The reason why I want you to write that down is because too many churches, not this one, um, and that doesn't make us special, it just makes us obedient. Too many churches want to spend time talking about stuff that the writer of Hebrews said that you should already know. You don't ever talk, preach on sin. I sure don't. I do if the Lord tells me to. But are there any... Known sinners in here, y'all here doing stuff I don't know, y'all here sinning on purpose and running around carousing. No, you're not doing that. If you got sin in your life, you know it. Right. Let me come over here. I might. If I got sin in my life, I know it. I don't need you to tell me. I don't need you to tell me. She don't need me to tell her. Right? You know it was your fault. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But my point is, these are doctrines that we should be well versed in. Yes. Laying on of hands is one of those. Yes. Huh? Yes. Baptisms. Why, why, why is it some, some, some denominations want baptism by sprinkle? Some want it baptism by Duncan. What difference does it make? In the grand scheme of things, does it make any difference? No, it doesn't. So I say that because we're going to push beyond that. You studied out for yourself. There's actually seven listed there. Doctrine of Christ. The teaching, and all the word doctrine means is Christ. I mean, uh, is teaching. Okay, that's what that word means, teaching. Teaching of Christ. When I say doctrine, it means literally translated in English. It is teaching. So teaching of Christ. How many of y'all know something about Jesus Christ? Okay, good, good, good. That's good. How many of y'all know about repentance from dead works? We learned this in Sunday school years ago. We know this. I'm not going to spend time talking about something you already know. Again, if the Lord tells me to, I will. Faith towards God. Come on. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know this. Baptism, like I said, laying on of hands. Uh, resurrection of the dead. You do know that when you die, you don't really die. Just the earth suit dies. Y'all know that, right? It's called resurrection. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. See, y'all know this, okay? What's the last one here? It says eternal judgment. Now, eternal judgment is something you might not be well-versed on, but I'm going to make it real simple for you. Eternal judgment is this. Uh, if you're saved, you go to heaven. If you're not, you go to hell. Right. Just that simple. And I'm not, trying to, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be simple. Because you don't have to go to hell. And I know preachers, I know preachers right now, and, and, and there are consultants that say you shouldn't mention certain words in your, in your services anymore. 
No, I shouldn't have you saying anything to me in my ear anymore. Because as sure as it's in the word of God, there's going to be occasion that needs to be talked about. Amen. So let's look at something real quick. I want to I want to. Hallelujah. You got a picture for me? Give me that first picture, if you would, please. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it's picture time. Picture, picture, picture. Everybody likes a good picture, don't they? Can y'all see that? It's a tree. But it's significant that I want you to see it. I'm going to share you something. As I, we're, we're going to the fruit of the Spirit, if you haven't figured that out. But I, I want to. Okay, that's good. Can y'all see it better? Is that better? Okay, look at this for a minute. Now, I don't know how far over here I can walk, so hopefully I won't blast you out. Okay. You see the tree, right? Tell me, tell me what you see. Part of it's above the ground, a whole bunch of it's under the ground. Okay, but how much of it is the tree? All of it. All right, that's all I want to say. So on the tree, you have what appears to be apples, fruit. You also have leaves. You have limbs that can't necessarily be seen. Come on now. Am I right? With the limbs, you come down and there is a trunk. There's a trunk. See that trunk? But if I were walking along this path and just walking, this is what I would see. Right? But what is here? The roots. Okay? Okay. The roots now, somebody say roots, somebody, it's saying, you know, you country, you country, I get it, you know. <laughs> roots, that's what we grew up saying, roots. It's okay, it's all the same. Now, this is significant because this is who? I heard somebody say it. Who said us? Speak up. That's us. You may not think that's you, that's you. If you are in the kingdom of God, that's you. You got another picture for me? Give me the next picture. All right. What do you see? Two trees on a hill. What else is there? What else is there? On the tree, not the sky. What else is there? But I'll get to that sky. What else is there? Leaves, limbs, trunk. Roots. And if it's a fruit tree, fruit. Listen to me. Even if it's not, hallelujah, even if it's not an apple tree, then what is the fruit of this tree? Say it. So, leaves. That's the fruit of that tree. If it's not a fruit bearing tree, can I ask you a question? What else could be in the tree covering? A bird could be in there. Right. Squirrel, raccoon. All of those things could be in there. What else is there for sure? Roots. OK. Now, what happened to the tree? What have you been talking about? Who said it? Multiply. Did it try to multiply? What happened? It just did. Once it got. Once the seed got planted, it grew. Can I tell you why Christians in most places don't grow today? Because they don't get planted. I'm going to prove it to you. If I have time, I'm going to prove it to you. What we do is in a community of believers, mm, help me, Lord. <laughs> if I could go, go back, can you go back to the first one, please? See this? We were sitting at a table. I was sitting at a table yesterday out there at the park, and the Lord showed me this illustration. See how he does? You know, if you listen, he's going to talk to you and tell you something. I know full well, okay, go to the next one. Right here, looking at this part, go to the next one, that these have roots. You think, you think that they're divided down the middle? All intertwined. Now, I, again, I said that's us. So this is, symbolically, this is us. The Bible calls us trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. So my root goes right through her heart. If I stop supplying, she's affected by it. If I decide that I don't want to be a part of this thing anymore, 
and I go over here and try to transplant myself, then what happens is that soil has not been prepared for me and I try to put myself where God never planted me in the first place. Help me. I'm preaching better. Y'all saying amen. That's why you have to know that you know what God is, where he called you to be. This church is not for everybody. And I'm not just giving a commercial about this church. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Why? That's why we become weak and impotent and can't get nothing done. We believe God for blessings, but it doesn't come because we have to be planted. So that my root can run right through everybody in this section. I'm giving you a supply right now. You getting it. You are getting it right now. Say I'm getting it. Y'all ain't talking. You getting it right now. I'm giving it to you because God gave it to me. I'm giving it to you. Somebody else gave it to me. And then you're giving it right back. When you show up, you are giving it back to me. You pull something out of me that the Holy Ghost is the only one that can get it out. I'm telling you what I know. And he's pulling. He's trying to give me the next picture, please. I almost can't contain this. This is what we're supposed to look like. A forest. My God, when God takes an acorn, he doesn't just take an acorn and make an oak tree grow. And every acorn is a forest. Hallelujah. Come on now. In every one of us, there is multiplication. There should be thousands of people following us. They should come after us like, what do you have? I want it because you're just so attractive. The Bible says about Abraham that not only not only did God make a promise to him, but he said that you are going to have a over a overbounding, abounding favor. You got a business, they're supposed to come and buy from you. You walk into the garage, they're supposed to fix your car at a discount if not for free. Help me, Lord. You walk into the doctor's office and they can't figure out why. I just don't see it anymore. It was there one minute. It's not the next because the favor of God has hit your life. Only coming from Abraham, from God through. Amen. Because you are Abraham's seed and heirs. Lord, help me preach on heirs one day. An heir does not walk around with his head down. You can turn the lights back on. An heir is somebody who who knows that there is an inheritance waiting for them. They grow up in the palace of the king and they don't have to. Yeah, they got tutors because they just babies right now. But when those babies turn up to mature and they grow up to be strong men and women, they go out here and make decisions and influence culture. And the devil wants to keep us thinking that we're just insignificant. Oh, well, you know, it's just me, just little old me. Ain't nothing little about you, baby. Come on, man. Ain't nothing little about you. You got the great big God of the universe just waiting to bust out of you. And see, this is why the devil likes to keep us ignorant, because he, 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 he makes us think, well, you know, let, let me just make it real personal. Can I just talk real plain for a minute? If I decide I don't want to pastor this church no more and walk away, are you going to be affected by that? Yes. I'm not talking about your feelings. I'm talking about are you going to be affected? Sure you are, because you put trust that God had called us here. And all I said, well, you know, God's called me here. God's called me here. God's called me here. And I turn around and I ain't feeling this no more. So I'm out because I got I want a bigger stage. The devil is a liar. I know God changes assignments. I get that. But you got to understand the significance of this is that that not just the world is watching because they are. But my God, heaven is watching, looking in and seeing what's going on. What's the goings on of the of the region of the earth? God, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And not, Lord, what's going on in life point? Why you got them looking like this? They look like they just scattered and they don't look like much from the outside. But God's not looking at the outside. He's looking at the inside. I wish I had some help this morning. So, 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 how much time do I have? Somebody cheating on that clock. Anyway, glory to God. <laughs> Genesis 12 and 2. Genesis 12 and 2. Real quick, from the Amplified. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Genesis 12, verse 2, from the Amplified. When you get it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Genesis 12 and 2 says, and I will make of you, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, make of you a great nation. Who's he talking to? Abraham. Did he do it? Make of you a great nation. And I will bless you. Did he do it? He goes on to say, and the Amplified, so I'm reading this, with abundant increase of favors. Help me, Jesus. And make your name famous. Some of y'all figure, well, you know, 
it's just little old me. Yeah, it is, but you know, I want to. I want to name some of y'all. Yeah, if you pull your religious toes in, you won't be offended by this. But if you choose to be, that's on you. Uh, I want the name of Tommy Roberts to be known, not because of Tommy Roberts, because I'm all I'm going to do is talk about Jesus. Amen. I don't want that. You're missing something. Because see the blessing of the Lord, see the, the blessing of Abraham on your life. It's not. It's not for you. This is not for me. I, I, you know, I, I'm careful here. I'm careful here. Because I don't want to make a sound, but, 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 you know, when I talk to people, um, there's, there's a person I've been talking to quite frequently because I'm close to them. And, and so uh, they quite frequently tell me, well, I'll, I'll be in service. And they don't show up. It ain't hurting me. Y'all get that, right? Okay. But you do know that you serve him, right? Because I got no place to send you. I'm just saying, you know, so, 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 so if your words are no good, mm, mm, you draw your own conclusion. So if I, and I'm saying, that, I'm just saying, that I'm, not, I'm not throwing shade, I'm not trying to, I'm just telling you, I can't, I can't think of anything else right now. Because ultimately, if, it's like if I tell somebody, um, <laughs> I don't know how I got here, but I will wash the dishes before I go to bed. She wake up, and it's this is still in the sink. Now we've been married long enough. She will say something, but <laughs> some of y'all would do the dishes yourselves, which is the right response. Her saying something to make sure that my word has integrity. Amen. Hear me well. The platform that most of us want. When I say platform, I mean that God platform where I'm healed, I'm prosperous, uh, I'm influential, wealthy, um, live good, smell good, drive good, um, people, people gravitate to me, that platform that most of us want, we don't have the character to be on it. How do I know? If your words are no good, your character is no good. And God is not going to drop and unleash all the blessings of Abraham on you. They're there. They're there. Don't act like they ain't there. But if your word is not trustworthy. Now, I may not know that you. <laughs> you know how we say, well, I meant to. What's that? The path to success is paved with good intentions. OK. Oh, OK. I, I mean, there's a lot of things. That's why. Now, if I'm going to tell if I'm going to tell Brother Robertson back there, but Rob, I'm going to come over there and paint, help you paint your house. I'm not even fixing my lips to tell that lie because I ain't painting nobody's house. I don't paint. I do not. Not that I'm too good to paint. I just ain't doing it. OK, so better for me to say, brother, here's twenty dollars. <laughs> you know and what do I maintain? My integrity. Now, when we go to work and clock in late, when we take a pencil, a paper clip, it's quiet up in this church now. Huh? It's the same. And, and your boss ain't going to know the difference. The company ain't going to miss it. I was just, no, 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 this is me. This is not God. Okay, though. That, just getting ready to unlock that thing that you asked for. But you've proven once again your word is no good. Help us, indeed. I got your attention now. That's good. Let's keep going. <laughs> because what God wants to do is he wants that favor flow. Mm, man, I feel that. That favor flow to just, it should, go, it should go here all the way through that thread. That favor just come, I mean, through every person, the favor of God. Remember what the Bible said about the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt? There was their clothes weren't their shoes were good. Their clothes were good. They never missed a meal. They came out with wealth and riches. And somehow or another, we think that's a myth, a fairy tale. Listen, the Bible says in the, in, the, in the beginning of the first century church that they had all things common and no man counted what their, their own as their own. They just there was just a free flow like she was talking about today. There was enough revenue. There was enough re, uh, resources in the church that I ain't got to go out here and hire a lawyer because I got a lawyer you're sitting in the house. I ain't got to go outside the house and find a doctor because I got a Christian believing doctor in the house. Amen. 
Glory to God, I feel like preaching this morning. Everything I need is in the house. Isn't that right? That's how God is. But, but, but the, many times the reason, if I, you don't have to put the picture back up there, but the reason why a lot of that's not happening is because the roots have been cut. I, have, I, I had a plant. I, have, I still have a plant. I have a plant, very special to me, very, very special plant to me. You, some of you have heard it before. And the plant, I looked at it, and I take good care of my plants. Uh, I don't let Pastor Nett touch them. I take good care of my plants. <laughs> she, she know. She ain't ashamed. She know. I don't touch them. Okay. She get the artificial kind. Uh, the per perpetual green ones, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, so I got a plant, and I looked at the plant one day, and it, it, it was on its last leg. It was checking out of here. And I, had that pl I have had that plant s 14 years. Is that right? In the same pot. And I, I, I was like, Lord, he said, well, the reason why I got like that is because you neglected it. I didn't intend to. I didn't intend to. I love that plant. Right. Yeah. You know, so because I love it, I just got caught up. I got distracted and everything. You know, sometimes, you know, that happens in life, you know. And so but the Lord said, I got a remedy. He told me who to give it to, to take to, to repot it, and replant it because I couldn't do it. And, and that resource was right in the house. Yeah. Yeah. You look at that plant now, it's growing all over my little bay window there. It's all over the place. But it was almost gone. Yeah. That's called favor. Yeah. You, you, you come in here today and you might need a mortgage payment. You might have a diagnosis that's terminal. You might have an impossible situation. But the favor of God, because you walked in the door and you heard the message and the resources from the kingdom down through my life right now as he's anointed me to speak, are coursing into your spiritual body, changing your thought process, and you start acting like what you really want to be and who you are. You are an overcomer and a victor and more than a conqueror. You are the healed, my God, and not the sick. Amen. You are rich and not poor. Yes. The Bible says, though he were so very rich, yet he became poor. That we, through his poverty, would become rich and we don't want to talk about money. All over the place. All over the place. We've been waiting to get that in for long, man. All over the place. And we come in church and we scared to talk about money. You need it. If you don't, and you guys, I tell you, I got to throw this in there. My neighbor, he's so funny. <laughs> we're out there. I don't know what we were doing. We are coming back from the picnic or whatever we are doing. And my neighbor, he's, he's a great guy. He went, he has a moving company. And he went and... Uh, got, this guy was going to throw, he was moving out of state or out of country, whatever, and he was going to throw away a lawn tractor a, uh, uh, that had the, you know, the containers on the back that ca catch the grass, had a, uh, a, a cart, like a little wagon, brand new. These things look brand new. Okay? You can throw them away, you can put them in the dumpster. He walked up and said, well, I'll, I'll take them from you. He said, well, okay. So he ended up blessing him, giving him some money for him. So he's over there, and he put, now, my neighbor don't need one. He got a big one out sitting out the back of his yard. You don't need what God's going oh, help me, Lord. What God wants to do for you, you don't necessarily need, but somebody else might. Amen. Overflow. Amen. And, and so, so he, he came in there, he was trying to get that thing started, and he's, you know, it's blowing smoke everywhere. It's blowing. His wife came outside, he, he doesn't set the, the, the fire alarms off, smoke detectors off. <laughs> so, so funny. I was like, but I was walking by him, he said, he said, hey, you know, look, I said, if anybody can get it going, you're going to get it going. As we were walking the dog, we walked around the corner, came back around the corner. He said, you know, you're right. I just got that thing started. And he don't know it, but that's the favor of God on my life. And come to find out that the lawn tractor is nine years old. The guy used it one time, one time, one time. The wagon is so new, it looked like he just pulled it off the shelf. It's at least 10 years old. And what, what's my point there? He's, this man has got, he's got money to burn, just throw out there, because I guess he was a doctor. He, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. I don't know why he just had somebody cut his grass in the first place. He could afford it. If you're only going to use the tractor one time, give it to me. I'm just saying. And if you got money like that, that you don't want to talk about money because you got so much money, that's usually who has the money. People, people who don't talk about money, they don't talk about it because they got plenty and they don't want you to know it. Some of y'all get that later. Okay. Last couple minutes here. Am I right? Can I go just a little bit longer? Yeah. Ephesians. 
Ephesians 2. Turn there before me real quick. Ephesians 2. Mm, 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 mm. Ephesians 2. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God did everything he said he was going to do concerning Abraham. He did it with Noah. He even did it with Adam. God preserved Adam by, by kicking him out because if he had stayed there, he was going to have to die. And he eventually died anyway. We talked about that a few weeks ago. But he wasn't intended to die, was he? He was not. He was not. It was not God's plan. He, there was no reason to die because all his life was coming from the Lord. So in Ephesians 2 and 10, if you have it, say amen. I can't see it on the board just because the lighting's bad. Glory to God. For, for we are God's own handiwork. And, and I want it from the Amplified. I've been in the Amplified most of the day today, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Back in the back. Okay. I'm going to read this from Expanded Bible 2 here. As soon as I get it. Oh, my, 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 my. Boy, my Bible's really marked up, man. I got so much I can barely. Okay. <laughs> for we are God's own what? Workmanship. Workmanship. Amplified says handiwork. Listen, recreated. Look up at me. Don't read anymore. Look up at me. You and I have been recreated in Christ. 2 yeah. Corinthians 5.17 tells us that. You can write that down. Now, why is that significant? Let me keep going, and I'll show you. Recreated in who? Christ, Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined okay, or planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. What does the rest of it say? Who's got to amplify Bible? What does the rest of it say? That we should walk in them. What? Come on, say it loud. Living the good life which he prearranged. Listen to me. Close your Bibles. Close your Bibles. You and I have been recreated. Not because we were sinners. Listen to me. I'm, I'm, yeah, Lord. Sin and its introduction into humanity caused us to need to be changed. You and I, starting out with the Father, were his workmanship, as he said, predestined before with him. Each one of us has been with God before. There is no... There is no way for you and I to be in the, on the planet if we haven't already been with God because all life and its origin begins with God. Yes. Now, I know that's kind of, some of y'all are like, whoa, I didn't know that, or really? You know, trust me. Because of that, every human comes through, down through the pipeline. The pipeline is this. The intent originally, pipeline, God, Adam and Eve, us. Because of sin, now it's God, Jesus, us. Yes. But the plan of God for fruit, uh, being fruitful and multiplying is still in, in place. How do I know this? What God does is he gives us life, and that more abundantly, John 10, he gives us life. You know what he said? Jesus said, I come to give you life, and that more abundantly. Yes. The created life that we're supposed to walk only, work, only works when we walk it God's way. The biggest challenge for most of us is learning to walk it God's way. Right. Walking it God's way means that you can't necessarily see what's ahead. Amen. It's called faith. Yes. When things happen to us, accidents happen. Our daughter left here, in my, in my eyes, prematurely because of an accident. Okay? Everybody knows that. It's been here. Okay? Now, when she left here, I, she and I had to have already made the choice in knowing who we are and knowing who he is and who we are in him before the tragedy hits so that the tragedy doesn't cause us to distrust him. If, I, if, I, if the devil can ever get me, and what he'll do, he's, he's, a, he's a louse, okay? He, is, he don't play fair. He waits until our daughter leaves and then tries to throw on guilt, shame, disappointment, 
disillusionment, disenchantment. We are devastated is what he wants us to be. Grief stricken, can't get over it. 18 year old daughter in the prime of her life leaves prematurely and he wants us to, remember what I told you last week about one of the greatest curses that, that people can speak over you is that you never move from where you are today positionally. You never grow, you just stay the same way. That's what God, what the devil wants for Christians. And many Christians do that. So what we did was we already had the information and in who we are that we had been recreated in Christ. And we knew that we were like those trees. We had a support system in place that if we didn't have the nutrients coming to us because we were so we I mean, we were we it, it, it hit us hard. But my God, people showed up at my house and people came from all over the place because God will send whatever he has to send or whoever he has to send to you to help keep you on the right path. And when you when you separate the root system, you are on your own. And the next thing you know, you know, a tree doesn't look like it's dying until it dies. But it's been dying long before the leaves start falling off. Jesus said, I pray that you would bear forth, bear much fruit and that your fruit would remain. Now, where I was going with that is this. What happens is God has no problem planting you somewhere where he's going to get his glory, not yours. He did it. He, he, he did it. He did it with Moses. Moses was, was, was by God, used by God. He was facing death at the hands of Pharaoh, but God set him right in the midst of Pharaoh's presence. God didn't exempt him. He's not going to exempt you and I. God, I want peace, but then you don't want turmoil around to show how much peace you have. God ain't just going to poof, bless you with what you need. I need money. Well, you need to go put a resume out there or something. You need to go get a J-O-B. He, he, he did it with Esther. Esther was facing the annihilation of her people. And, 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 and Mordecai, her uncle, says, listen, you weren't born because you look good and smell good and dress good, girl. You need to go over there and stand in front of the king and God will use you to stay the hand of death. Amen. Huh? He put Daniel. Daniel, here he is. Daniel is a teenager. By the time they're caught, brought into the Babylon, Babylon they're there and they give a bad bad law and bad rule and and Daniel's like looks and I'm not careful in this matter I am going to serve my God so by God Nebuchadnezzar you throw him in the pit and Nebuchadnezzar's down there saying Daniel are you okay that's the favor of God they put you in a situation where they think you're not going to be able to get up anymore they talk about you they knock you down that's what the devil does but you need to get up pull your stuff together look good smell good say baby I'm still standing that's the best shot you got. You should have killed me when I didn't know who I was. They should have took me out when, they, when I thought I was going to die. Now I know I ain't got to die till I get ready to go. You're supposed to be poor, not this preacher, baby. It might take me a while to get there, but I can guarantee you one thing, lick it and split, that my God is the supplier of all my need. And as long as God don't run out, I will never be broke another day in my life. He, he, he takes and, and, and moves, moves uh, God. One of the best characterizations I can get is Joseph. Takes Joseph and Joseph hadn't done anything wrong other than run his mouth maybe if you're going to blame him for talking too much. And if, if that was what got him in trouble, we'd all be in trouble most of the time. And here he is. He's, he's, he's talking and he's telling them what God showed him. And he thought it was a good thing because it was a good thing, but it didn't have the it didn't come about the way that he thought it was going to come about. Told his told his dad and his brother said, listen, I I see my sheaves and, and I see your sheaves and your sheaves, you know, wrapped wheat bowing down to mine. Brothers were like, are you crazy? You little pipsqueak. Nobody bowing down. to. And daddy was like, oh, really? Where did you get that revelation from? You know how they do? You say I'm healed. Oh, really? <clears throat> Where'd you get that from? You got to be willing to say that stuff in the face of the doctor. Yeah. Uh, we don't want the confrontation. We don't, I don't, I don't, that's not my personality. You know what? You better start changing your personality. Yeah. Let, the, let the reality of who Jesus is be your personality. Yeah. You ain't all that hot anyway. That's why you're in the predicament that you're in because you want to do it your way. God's like, okay, as long as they're going to do it their way, I'll just take a seat and I'll just let them go because they're coming back to me. Yeah. Joseph's down here and he ain't done nothing but run his mouth 
They put him in the pit. He sold into slavery. And as soon as he gets to the to Potiphar's house, as soon as he gets to Potiphar's house, he gets promoted. Don't make no sense at all. Some of y'all got promotions. God has already lined up for you. And in the process of the promotion, it looked like you got to clean the toilet before you can get the. Oh, help me, Lord. I don't do that. Uh huh. I don't do that. OK. All right. You just keep that little job you got and think you got it going on. And he goes into the goes now. And now he got matter of fact, he got women chasing him. What do you call that? What do you call it? Cougar. <laughs> Trying to run him down. He got to run out of his clothes. She grabbed his garment. Now he getting more trouble. Ain't done nothing wrong. Amen. Now Potiphar got to put him into prison. He going to prison. And the butler and the chef coming up to him saying, can you help me? But he in the prison. Because God doesn't use the ordinary to bring about the extraordinary. He doesn't have to use something crazy that looks magnificent. Everything in this book is magnificent. He gets in there. He's there. He's really in prison. I can imagine thinking, how did I get here? Some of y'all situations right now that, that, that not, are not even your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Now, some of y'all did. Some of y'all did. You know the difference. But you didn't do anything wrong. You married her and you didn't do anything wrong. You married this guy. I'm cleaned up a little bit. Because some of y'all don't clean it up. But married this guy and you didn't do anything wrong. How did I get here? I, I think about my wife. How did we get to be one child down? My God, how did I get here? Joseph's there in that prison. He's, the Bible doesn't give us any indication that he's feeling sorry for himself. He's not having a pity party. He's not complaining. He's just there. Some of you are just there. But I have to believe that there was something in the character of Joseph. That's why God picked him in the first place. He takes him and he allows him to go into a pit and into a prison because the third, the last place he's going to end up is in the palace. And he doesn't even know it. We see we have, we have been created as a tree of righteousness. And I can see the, the character of Joseph standing before God, unspotted, unblam unblameable. And he's just there and he's thinking, Lord, I love you. And I will not be moved by Potiphar's wife. I will not be moved by my brothers. I will not be moved by the situation that I'm in. And you use me in the darkest times. It doesn't make any sense. And he begins to tell them the dreams so much so that he goes, he goes and tells their dreams and they get released. He's still in prison. Then one day, he said, he's, he's, he's cautious. He says, just remember me. Just don't forget I'm here. If you can do anything. And he just walks away and leaves it alone. And, 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 and then, 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 then situations turn. I'm telling you, God is turning situations around. I wish you could get with me this morning. Turning it around. You can't see it, but God is there moving because of the favor of God on your life. And favor is not fair. Don't you ever think it is. Don't you think it's fair that somebody gives you a car, but not you. When they give you a house, don't you dare say, well, I'm not worthy. Give it to me. I am worthy. Because I'm going to tell everybody God gave it to me. I'm going to tell them that he paid it all. Hallelujah. That man came and the call came one day, said, 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 Pharaoh, there is a man down in the prison that can interpret dreams and see visions. There is a woman down there called Esther who has the power of God somehow. Don't know how she got it, but she's daring enough to walk into the presence of the king. Don't care if you kill me. If you kill me, I'm going to rise again. He gets in there. Cleans up a little bit. You got to be a little clean before you. And 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 and, and, and uh, he calls him, summons him, and says, "In essence, I'm paraphrasing. I understand you can see dreams. I had this dream." Dad, and he and he listens, and, and and Joseph listens, and he begins to interpret. And the Pharaoh says to him, "My God, my." Ah, you, there, whatever, whoever your God is had to give you this because this has been troubling on my heart. I am the king of all of Egypt. I am the one. Nothing worships unless they worship me. But I have found something greater in you that is in me. The Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. That's you. Walk out of here. 
Shoulders straight back square, my God. You might have came in with a limp, but fake it till you get it up. In Jesus' name, are you hearing me this morning? You might have come in here with no money in the bank. My God, I've been there so many times, it's almost ridiculous. But that don't stop me from being who God said because there's a day coming and it's not far off when I will never have to know what it feels like to not have money in the bank. Oh, my God. Help me. Joseph comes out, gives the interpretation that Pharaoh says, none greater in the kingdom except for me. You are the man. Why did God do it? Because after all was said and done, up comes the brothers of Joseph. My God. And they say, we are from Canaan and we need provision. They don't even recognize. God blesses you so much. He turns your darkness into mourning. He change your, changes your clothing and gives you garments of praise for the spirit of heaven. They don't even recognize you no more because you have changed your mind concerning God. God is the end all be all. I am not going to rely on myself. Joseph, Joseph didn't do it and neither did any of the other ones I listed and we can't do it either. His dad finally came to Egypt where he had been mourning the death of his son. He celebrates the promotion of his son. My God. And from that seed that he allowed himself to be, all of Israel began to grow and grow and grow. And the Bible says there grew up a Pharaoh. He's working for me. I don't even know who he is, but look at all the trees that have grown up little jews little hebrews little little israelites that have grown up look at them where they come from there's so many that they might even overthrow my kingdom and so the devil tries to retaliate but he can't stop who god has blessed that's you and i stand to your feet this morning thank you for your time thank you father you are blessed with faithful abraham you are blessed. You're not going to be blessed. When my wife mentions that about, she's talking about a specific empowerment for finances. That's what she says. It's blessing time. You come up here, you sow your seed. And some people think that if I sow my seed, that I get, I get, I don't know, I don't know, whatever you want. Money, money reproduces money. It does. That's a spiritual law. Money can't buy happiness. But it sure does make it better when you got some. Each one of us out here right now know where our money's coming from, do we not? Sure we do. We know what to expect. I'm, I want to submit to you that what God is doing is he's changing your thinking. He's changing your thinking. There's more available to us than we, what we've allowed ourselves to, to take partake of. It's not, not, it's that. You, you. <clears throat> uh, come on, just, just pray with me just for a minute. Thank you, Father. There's more. There's more. One service is not going to change your thinking. I, 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 I'm smart enough to know that. But I am going to tell you this. There are some who are in that, what the scripture says, in the valley of decision. The scripture says multitudes are in the valley of decision. You got to choose to follow God. It doesn't have to be at this church or whatever church. You do need a church. I said you do need a church. Amen. Jesus said that. I didn't say it. Jesus said that. But the decision to follow God, for my wife and I in particular, was made long before we ever knew what church we were going to. And when I say that, I want you to understand what I'm saying here. We're going to get into the fruit of the Spirit by God's grace next week if he allows me to do that. I was talking to my wife yesterday. Galatians, you're blessed. Galatians 5. I was talking to my wife yesterday, and I said, you know, as long as I've been preaching, I never paid any attention to this, but the Holy Spirit brought it to my attention. This is what I'm going to tell you. What is the number one fruit that's mentioned in Scripture? Love. And, I, and, I, and it may seem insignificant to you, but I do understand as the Lord was saying this to me. Here's what he said. He said, I sent Jesus to allow you to take part and eat that fruit. 
Because I believe that the fruit that, 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 that Adam ate and Adam and Eve ate was designed to be that fruit, but it hadn't matured yet. I'm not saying the Bible says that. I'm saying I believe that. I believe that tree that they were not supposed to eat, it was, too, it was premature. I, I'm just saying this by the Spirit of God. Premature before they could. God wouldn't have put it there as a temptation. Y'all know that? Don't y'all know that? God didn't put it there and say, okay, let me see if they're going to eat it. No, he put it there for them to partake of, but not before the time. And so because it was not mature and they didn't have all of the information they needed, God had to put the tree there and separate them from it. But now God comes and he puts uh, uh, the fruit available to us. The only way we get it is through Jesus Christ. So love, joy, peace, long suffering, right? Only thing we, only way we can get it now is through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, the one who picks the fruit from the tree is the Holy Ghost. He gives you love. He gives you peace. You can't get it on your own. He offers it to you. But if you don't get, if you try to get it outside of the Holy Ghost, you know what you have? You have a mess. And many of us have, many of us have done that. Lord, 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 deliver us from making mistakes that we just can't recover from. But God is faithful. Can you say amen to that? So I encourage you to study the uh, book of Galatians next week. You can do that as we move forward to that. But right now I want to pray for you. I want to pray. If there's anybody in here who, who is not born again, I don't know why you wouldn't be. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why you wouldn't be. But by the power of the Holy Ghost and the authority of God, I say to you that if you're not born again, could I please invite you to come? And, and I want to just be a participant in leading you to the Lord. Because it's the best thing that's ever happened to mankind. Ooh, boy, and it's just the beginning of the journey. Doesn't mean life is going to be significantly better in terms of what you're dealing with right now. But it does mean that you're doing what I just suggest, said a minute ago. You're, you're, you're taking the right step on the right path and starting making decisions that are going to lead you to success and not failure. Some of, some of us have failed so much that all we ever see is notices or we see, see disappointment or we see things. And it's like, when will it ever change? Well, it'll change when you change your mind. Amen? If he can change your thinking, he can change your destination. Father, we thank you today. We give you praise for your beloved people. They've been so patient with me today. Lord, I pray that your presence has blessed them, God, from the inside out, that they came in here one way, but they leave another. I pray, Father, that your grace and your mercy would continually, continually impose itself on them so that they never think, never have to think I'm not worthy or I'm not righteous. They are worthy. They are righteous. For any man that be in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself again, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. So I reach out and reconcile my brothers and sisters, Father. Doesn't matter how long they've been gone, doesn't matter when I'll see them again, my love that you've given me extends toward them. The root system begins to grow and expand. And on that great glorious day, Father, when all of us are once and for all in your presence, God, we will look out and see how many lives have been impacted just because we dared stand and keep, Lord, the, the flow of those roots going. So let people pick fruit off my tree. It's okay, Father. Let them pull the leaves off. It's okay. I don't have any problem with that. Let them come and wrap themselves around the trunk. Whatever they want to do, I belong to you, and I am the seed that you have planted in this church. I give you praise for that, and I bless your people richly. In Jesus' name, can you say amen?